So two years ago, I made a video in pursuit of understanding a salvia archetype known as the wheel. Since then, Patrick Smith, a psychedelic writer and biologist, who I sourced in my last week's video on the salvia zipper, gave a talk at breaking conventions on the salvia wheel and did a really good job. I made this video in response not to point out how our talks are similar, even though we share a lot of the same sources but because we drew very different conclusions and I want to defend my stance. In Patrick's talk, he asserts that physicalism can only take you so far, then turns to Buddhism as a means of gaining a deeper understanding of this archetype. But, you know, this is a physicalist interpretation, this is a pharmacological interpretation. The idea that salvinorin A is, is shutting down the colostrum is a, nice, is a nice sort of chain of cause and effect, but really it lacks explanatory power of, of our phenomenological experience of the wheel unless you're a hardcore physicalist. And I'm not a hardcore physicalist, so let's go into the experience of the wheel a little bit more. In my video, on the other hand, I lean toward the physicalist approach, preferring to look toward the fields of mathematical dimensions and quantum mechanics for possible explanations. It just did not give me any insight into the mechanics or operations of the Salvia wheel. This is actually my first response video and I'm doing it because his video will likely surpass mine in views in the near future. And I want to explain why I believe that physicalism is the better and more accurate way to understand the world than religious or spiritual interpretations. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So physicalism is the principle that what is real is simply... Physicalism is the principle that what is real is simply physical. A doctrine that allows us to apply the scientific method. It gives us the tools we need to further our understanding of these topics and allow diverse and new theories to grow by providing peer-reviewed data and testable experiments that can verify our hypotheses. I mean, yes, it is true that some teachings in Buddhism describe concepts that bear striking resemblance to user reports of these archetypes, such as this passage from a book called Secret Oral Teachings in Tibetan Buddhist Sects by Alexandra David Neal and Lama Yangden that Patrick cited in his lecture. The tangible world is movement, say the masters. Not a collection of moving objects, but movement itself. There are no objects in movement. It is the movement which constitutes the objects which appear to us. They are nothing but movement. The movement is a continued and infinitely rapid succession of flashes of energy. All objects perceptible to our senses, all phenomena of whatever kind and whatever aspect they may assume, are constituted by a rapid succession of instantaneous events. This sounds like it is describing the pages of time, the subcomponents that make up the greater wheel itself. See my last video on the wheel for more info on that. <laughs> this rapid succession of flashes of energy reflects the Planckian theory that space-time is not a continuous stream of matter in transformation, but rather a series of holographic projections. Obviously, we know this. <laughs> While I find it interesting when old metaphysical writings predict current scientific theories, it bugs me that the sources of said information are left vague. How did these so-called masters obtain the knowledge that they've immortalized through generations of teachings as truth? Without direct sources, this information is uncreditable when building proper theories. A theory with no evidence is just an idea, and we can't put our trust into baseless ideas alone. If these ideas had been presented honestly, just as ideas, it would be easier to incorporate and adapt them within the scientific method and work to validate all or parts of the claims presented. The problem for me is when spiritual leaders proclaim their notions as truth and demand our unquestioning faith and devotion in return. Like, I'm sorry, but I do not believe the Buddha was the enlightened one who transcended karma and escaped the wheel cycle of birth and rebirth. Of course, the scientific method has its limits when it comes to exploring the meanings of certain phenomena. As a philosophy, there is much to gain, build off of, and grow intellectually from Buddhism. Just as one can learn from any text, even if they reject it. 
all religions could give potentially enriching philosophical takes on our existential questions. And I applaud Buddhism for espousing among the least violent religious doctrines. So I guess I give us some points there. As a skeptic, I would recommend being especially weary of religions. To conclude, I am Pat. <laughs> I am Patrick Smith. To conclude, I am grateful to Patrick Smith for his contributions to the Soviet archetype conversation, and I wish him the best with his career and his psychedelic ventures. When it comes down to it, I argue that it is science, with its practice of methodical testing and data analysis, that we can trust to adapt to the ever-changing circumstances that inform our pursuit of concrete, provable answers to our life's questions. Meanwhile, the tenets of religion are left to stagnate in repressive institutions that ultimately stunt intellectual growth if left unquestioned. And there it shall rest, along with the zillions of other ideas, waiting in hope that perhaps one blessed day it will be confirmed. Thank you for listening to my opinion and watching me take down Buddhism. I hope you enjoyed and I would love to hear your opinions down in the comments where we can have a respectful discussion. Thanks again to all my subscribers, and special thanks to all my patrons over at Patreon. Like, comment, and subscribe for new content almost weekly. Trip safe.